Hello class and welcome to Emergency Care and Transportation of the Sick and Injured Chapter 20, Immunologic Emergencies. After you complete this chapter and the related coursework, you will understand the anatomy, physiology, and pathophysiology of hypersensitivity disorders and anaphylactic reactions. Additionally, you will have the knowledge and the skills to recognize and manage hypersensitivity disorders and anaphylactic reactions. As an EMT, you will often respond to calls involving an allergic reaction, which is an allergy-related emergency, and it may involve airway obstruction and cardiovascular collapse. You must be able to treat these life-threatening complications. You must also be able to distinguish between the body's usual response to an allergen and an allergic reaction. This chapter describes immunology, which is a study of the body's immune system and the five categories of stimuli that may provoke an allergic reaction. Okay, first we're going to talk about the anatomy and physiology. The immune system protects the body from foreign substances and organisms. When a foreign substance invades the body, the body goes on alert. The body initiates a series of responses to and activate the invader. Okay, so now let's talk about the pathophysiology of an allergic reaction. It's an exaggerated immune response to any substance. It is not caused by an outside stimuli, such as a bite or a sting. Rather, it is caused by the immune system, um, which releases chemicals to combat the stimulus. These chemicals include histamines and leukotrienes, both of which contribute to an allergic reaction. Given the right person and the right circumstances, almost any substance can be a could become an allergen. First, the person becomes sensitized. So they're exposed for the first time to a substance. Then his or her immune system learns to recognize the substance. When the patient is exposed to that substance again, the allergic reaction occurs. Some patients may not know what is causing their allergic reaction, so you must be able to recognize the signs and symptoms and maintain a high index of suspicion. An allergic reaction may be mild and local, characterized by itching, redness, or tenderness, or severe and systemic, a condition known as anaphylaxis. Okay, and here is a uh, picture of um, anaphylaxis, which is an extreme life-threatening allergic reaction. It involves multiple organ systems. In severe cases, it can rapidly result in shock and death. Three common signs are uticaria, which is hives. It's a small area of generalized itching and burning that appear to be uh, appear as multiple small raised areas on the skin. Angioedema, that is areas of local swelling. And if you see in the slide, you could actually see this patient's tongue has the angioedema. Also wheezing. Um, allergic reactions or anaphylaxis is going to have wheezing in the lung sound. So a high-pitched whistling breath sound that is uh, typically heard on expiration. It results from bronchospasm and bronchial constriction and increased mucus production. You may also note hypotension due to vasodilation, as well as increased capillary permeability. An often overlooked symptom of patients experiencing an allergic reaction is persistent gastrointestinal dysfunction, such as nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. Common allergens is what we're gonna discuss next. So the most common allergens fall into one of the five general categories. The first most common allergen is a food. So certain foods such as shellfish and peanuts, peanuts may be the most common trigger of anaphylaxis. The foods account for 30% of the deaths from anaphylaxis, most commonly in adolescents and young adults. Some of the symptoms may take more than 30 minutes to appear. They may not include skin signs such as hives, the reaction can be severe and involve respiratory and cardiovascular systems. 
medications also cause allergic reactions. Medications are the second most common source of an anaphylactic reaction, including anabolic anabolics such as penicillin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs. If the medicine is injected, the reaction may be immediate within 30 minutes and severe. Reactions to oral medications may take more than 30 minutes to appear, but can also be very severe. If the medication is injected, the reaction may be immediate as I said, within 30 minutes and severe. Reactions also to oral medicines, um, as mentioned on the, um, the previous slide, may also be just as severe. Okay, another um, common allergen is plants. Dust pollens and other plant materials can cause a rapid and severe allergic reaction. Common plant allergens include ragweed, ryegrass, maple and oak. Chemicals are a common allergen as well. They're the number four. The, um, certain chemicals make up so paradigm latex and various other substances can cause allergic reactions. Latex is of particular concern to healthcare workers, um, which um, patients can become sensitive to it. And as many as 12% of healthcare providers have been sensitized to latex. Use nitrile gloves uh, when available. And then the final, then the fifth most common allergen is insect bites and stings. When an insect um, bites or stings a person, the act of injecting the venom is called envenomation. The reaction may be localized, causing swelling and itching to the site, or it may be severe and systemic, such as anaphylaxis. Insect stings. Approximately 3% of adults and 1% of children are allergic to venom of bees, wasps, and hornets. And allergic reactions to insect stings account for at least 50 deaths in the United States per year. In about half of these deaths, the victim had never experienced a reaction to a prior sting. The stinging organ of most insects is small, hollow spine projecting from the abdomen. Venom can be injected through the spine directly into the skin. Honeybees cannot withdraw their stinger. The honeybee flies away and dies. If the stinger is not removed, it can continue to inject venom for up to 20 minutes. Because they fly away, it is difficult to identify which species is responsible. Wasp and hornets can sting multiple times. They do not die after stinging. Some ants, especially the fire ant, also strike repetitively, often injecting a particular irritating toxin at the bite sites. Okay, so some signs and symptoms of an insect sting include sudden pain, swelling, a localized heat, widespread urticaria, or redness in light-skinned individuals, or itchy, and a possible wheel. So the wheel, W-H-E-A-L, is a raised, swollen, and well-defined area on the skin. And this is a photo of it. Flying ice sometimes makes stings and bees uh, and bites less irritating. The swelling associated with the insect bite may be dramatic and frightening. As long as these manifestations remain localized, they are not usually serious. In more severe anaphylactic cases, patients may experience bronchospasms and wheezing, chest tightness and coughing, dyspnea, anxiety, gastrointestinal complaints, and hypotension. Occasionally respiratory failure. If untreated, an anaphylactic reaction can proceed rapidly to death. More than two-thirds of patients who die of anaphylaxis do not do so within the first 30 minutes. So rapid treatment and transport is essential. Okay, so let's start talking about a patient assessment in an immunologic emergency. So you're going to do the scene safety, scene size up, and of course, the patient's environment or recent activity may indicate the source of the allergic reaction, so pay attention. A stinger bite from an insect, food allergy at a restaurant, or new medication regimen. So a respiratory perpet respiratory problem reported to dispatch may be an allergic reaction until the field impression of 
allergic reaction is firmly established, be mindful of other potential causes of respiratory distress. Traumatic injury may also be present secondary to the medical emergency, so follow standard precautions with a minimum of gloves and eye protection. Consider the need for additional responses, such as an advanced life support personnel. Your primary assessment should be quickly and should try and identify and treat immediate and potential life threats. Assess the ABCs as deterioration can occur at almost any time and with very little warning. ABCs should be reassessed repeatedly throughout the transport. Form your general impression next. Um, so allergic reactions may present as a respiratory condition or a cardiovascular distress in the form of shock. Patients experiencing a severe allergic reaction will often appear anxious. If your general impression finds the person anxious and in distress, immediately call for ALS backup if available. Look for a medical identification tag if the patient is uh, found unresponsive or unable to answer questions. A and B. Anaphylaxis can be can cause rapid swelling of the airway. You may have only a few minutes to ask it access the airway and uh, provide life-saving measures. Not all allergic reactions are anaphylactic reactions, so work quickly to um, assess the patient and to determine the severity of the symptoms and the number of body systems affected. Quickly assess for increased work of breathing, use of accessory muscles, head bobbing, tripod position, nasal flaring, and abdominal breath sounds, wheezing, is due to narrowing of the airway passages resulting from contraction of muscles around the bronchioles in reaction to the allergen and mobilization of mucus in an attempt to push out the allergen. As the patient's condition worsens, breathing may diminish to the point of almost silent. So strider, a, har a harsh high-pitched sound heard on inspiration can eventually lead to total obstruction. The patient may eventually fatigue and may stop breathing. In another case, in la later case, cardiac arrest will shortly follow respiratory arrest. Assist the patient into a comfortable position, generally in the high Fowler's position, to maximize ventilations. If signs of shock emerge, immediately place a patient in a supine position as tolerated. Listen to lung sounds on each side of the chest. Do not hesitate to initiate high-flow oxygen therapy. For a patient in severe respiratory distress, you may have to assist ventilations using a bag valve mask attached to a high concentration of oxygen. Circulation. Some patients in anaphylaxis may present with signs and symptoms of circulatory distress, such as hypotension. Palpate for the presence and quality of the radial pulse. Assess the rapid pulse rate cool, cyanotic, or red moist skin, and delayed cap refill, all of which may indicate hypoperfusion. Treatment for shock. So place uh, oxygen, positioning the patient, uh, recumbent or subine as tolerated, and preventing heat loss. The definitive treatment for anaphylactic shock is epinephrine. And then finally, your transport decision. So the D of the ABCD. If anaphylaxis is as suspected, or if a relatively mild allergen allergic reaction appears to be worsening, immediately transport, immediate transport is warranted. Take along the patient's medications, auto injectors or inhalers. If the patient is calm and does not exhibit severe symptoms, consider continuing the assessment, but err on the side of emergency transport. Investigate the chief complaint or history of the present illness. Identify signs and symptoms. This table shows additional signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction. Okay, so sample history. Sample history, history of the patient. Um, if the patient's responsive, obtain a sample history, including OPQRST and ask him or her the following questions specific to an allergic reaction. Have any interventions already been completed and has the patient experienced a severe allergic reaction in the past? 
be alert for any statements regarding the ingestion of foods that commonly cause allergic reactions. Inquire about the presence of gastrointestinal complaints such as nausea and vomiting. Okay, your secondary assessment. So this secondary assessment is a very important part of your patient assessment um, when it comes to allergic reactions. So um, if indicated, perform a rapid exam of the body from head to toe or conduct a physical examination which is focused on the areas of that chief complaint. So if the patient is unconscious or otherwise unable to communicate, remove clothing as necessary and look for the presence of bee stingers or signs of contact with chemicals or any other clues that suggest some type of reaction. Look for a medical alert tag that could indicate a severe allergy. If you have not already done so, listen to breath sounds uh, such as wheezing or strider can and carefully inspect the skin for swelling rushes and uticary. If a systemic reaction continues, the body will have difficulty supplying blood and oxygen to the vital organs. Altered mental status is one of the first signs. Okay, now vital signs. So vital signs indicate whether the body is compensating for the stress imposed on the body by the reaction. So assess the baseline vitals, including pulse and respiratory status, blood pressure, pupillary response, and oxygen saturation. Skin signs may be unreliable indicators of hypoperfusion as well as they may vary widely or be hidden by rashes and swelling. Monitoring devices. In a patient experiencing an allergic reaction, pulse ox can be a useful method for assessing the patient's perfusion status. The decision to apply oxygen should be based on the airway's patency, work of breathing, and abnormal lung sounds on auscultation, not solely though on pulse ox readings. You're going to reassess en route to the hospital, repeat the primary assessment, reassess the patient's vitals, and repeat a focused physical exam of any affected body systems. If the patient is unstable, reassess every five minutes. If the patient's stable, reassess every 15 minutes. The patient experiencing a suspected allergic reaction should be monitored with vigilance because deterioration of the patient's condition can be rapid and fatal. Monitor the patient's anxiety level and mental status and watch for signs of shock and treat immediately if present. Interventions. So interventions, there are uh, treatment and it's determined by the severity of the reaction. So you have mild reactions which may require only supportive care and monitoring. Anaphylaxis, however, requires a more aggressive treatment, including epi and ventilatory um, support. So in either case, the patient should be transported to a medical facility for further evaluations. Recheck your interventions. You may need to give more than one injection of epi. Be sure to consult medical control before administering subsequent doses. Even if the patient is experiencing relief, transport to the emergency department is still warranted because the medication's effect will wear off and the symptom will return. Communicate, document the signs and symptoms found on your uh, during your assessment, reasons why you chose to provide the care you did, and the patient's response to the treatment. Emergency medical care of immunologic emergencies. If the patient appears to be having a severe allergic reaction or anaphylactic reaction, monitor the BLS, provide or administer BLS, provide prompt transport to the hospital. If the stinger is still present, scrape the skin with a edge of a sharp, uh, stiff object, such as a credit card. Do not use tweezers or forceps. Gently wash the area with soap or a mild anesthetic. Remove jewelry from the area before swelling begins. Position the injection site um, slightly below the level of the heart and apply cold or ice packs to the area, but not directly to the skin for not more than 10 minutes at a time. Be alert for the signs and symptoms of airway swelling and other signs of anaphylaxis, such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, and do not give the patient anything by mouth. Pace the patient in a supine position as indicated and give oxygen if needed. 
monitor vital signs and provide, um, be prepared to provide further support as needed. Okay, so epi, epi, what does it do? It's a sympathomimetic hormone, and it, which basically it mimics a the sympathetic response, so the fight or flight response. It has various properties that cause the blood vessels to constrict, which reverses the vasodilation of hypotension. Another property of epi is it increases the contractility and relieves bronchiospasms in the lungs. It can rapidly reverse the effects of anaphylaxis. Epi is prescribed by a physician and comes pre-dosed in an auto-injector. Some EMS systems are authorized to carry epi as a part as part of their regular onboard medicines, and other EMS providers may be permitted to help patients self-administer their own meds, refer to local product protocols, or consult online medical controls. All allergic Emergency kits should contain a prepared auto injector injectable syringe of epi. The adult EpiPen system delivers 0.3 milligrams of epi via a spring loaded needle and syringe system. The infant child system delivers 0.15 milligrams. If the medication has expired or is discolored, do not give the medicine. Inform medical control and continue to provide emergency transport. Epi can have an effect within one minute, so it is primary. It is the primary way to save the life of someone with a severe allergic reaction. Because epi constricts blood vessels, it may also cause the patient's blood pressure to rise significantly. Other side effects of epi are increased pulse rate, anxiety, cardiac arrhythmias, pallor, dizziness, chest pain headache, nausea, and vomiting. Patients without signs and symptoms of respiratory compromise or hypotension and who do not meet the criteria for the diagnosis of anaphylaxis should not be given epi. Some areas may allow administration of epi by intramuscular injection. With IM epi injection, the concentration must be a 1 to 1,000 ratio Find out what your local protocols allow for the epi IM injection. Okay, and that wraps up the immunological chapter. Next, we are going to be going through the review questions. Thank you for joining us today.